George Dow, MBE, an unbelievable award to be bestowed on you. Uh, I think everyone at the football club would agree that it's deserved, even if maybe you don't quite. Yeah, thank you. But talk us through it, George. How did you find out and how does it feel to be given that? Yeah, I was completely blown away, really. I found out from, um, well, a letter came to the club and Keith, the general manager, got in touch and just said, oh, you've had some posts delivered. It looks quite important, but I kind of didn't think much of it. And I just would pick it up next time I was in. And then I got an email saying, um, yeah, you've been awarded an MBE. And I thought, well, this is obviously a scam. And so I, I rang Keith and said, oh, and they come, come down, grab the letter, and that said the same thing. So I thought, oh, maybe it's not. But then I, I found them online, the, uh, the honours list page, and emailed them directly and just said, look, I've had this. Is this some sort of scam that's going around? And they said, no, it's, it's genuine, and you've been awarded an MBE. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It's been a, a year of some unbelievable moments for you. Um, I mean, for that to come at the end of the year, what a way to top it off. Yeah, obviously, you know, the birth of my daughter Bonnie, that was in November and then yeah, in December to, to get an MBA. It was an amazing end to, yeah, amazing end to 2023. Are you looking forward to the ceremony? How do you think it's all going to play out? I am looking forward to the ceremony a little bit, but I don't really know what and who it's going to be or where it's going to be even. I think they said they let me know within three to six months when I get to go off and um, do the ceremony. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure it'll be a proud moment for me and my family and yeah, it'll be, it'll be very different, I'm sure. A day out of the palace as well? Yeah, a day out of the palace. I've been at the gates a few times with them in, so yeah, see what it's like in there. You finally get to get in there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe convert a few of them to being Wordham fans as well. That's it, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's William. You know, he's into his football, isn't he? So I'll have a chat with him hopefully. Yeah, that will work out pretty well. So let's talk about like why you got that. Um, the member of uh, the MBE is for services to football and disability awareness. Let's touch on the more so the disability side of it. So you and Jess have had an Instagram account called The Wheelie Life. There's a number of other things you've done to raise awareness. Talk us through those and why that's been something you've been so passionate about. Yeah, obviously since my injury I was always, um, I don't know if it was like a, a passion to let people know that this. Well, I just wanted to let people know that there's still life after injury, basically. Obviously, spinal cord injury is close to my heart, and I know how tough it is in the early days of having a spinal cord injury. And I kind of just wanted to spread the message that there is still positive stuff that happens after your injury, and there's still stuff that you can go and achieve after your injury that uh, maybe at the time when you're, when you're on the injury, injured, you don't think is accessible to you anymore, or you kind of yeah, give up a bit. I was in that boat myself, and I, I didn't really know what to do with my life, so... Um, yeah, when I met Jessica and it was COVID and we didn't really have much to do, we thought, why not set up a, a page on Instagram? Because whenever we're looking for stuff about intro couples or about disability, it's always quite hard to find. So we kind of, yeah, thought we'd start a page and sort of try and find a community out there that we can sort of engage with and, and hopefully help some people along the way. And we managed to do that and yeah, build up a really good sort of um, community on real life. And uh, yeah, met some amazing people, learned a lot from them, and hopefully they've learned a lot from us as well. So yeah, that was the driver behind it really, to just make people aware of disability and that, um, yeah, just because we've got a disability doesn't mean we're different from everyone else. We're still humans, but just, just sitting down and have slightly different needs. How have you found finding people that that has inspired or people that have had the same experiences as you? Is that, has that connection been for you? It's, yeah, I love the connection with um, and chatting to people that have also had a spinal cord injury because I feel like I can um, sort of understand and relate to them on a different level and they can relate to me and we can have conversations that maybe only we really truly understand and it's, it is unique like when you meet someone that's had a, a similar injury to me or even just a spinal cord injury in general because although they're all very different there's so many similarities between them and you can really yeah, have a good chat and it's, it's just one of the things where you normally hit, hit it off straight away because you've got so much in common and you've been through the same sort of thing and you've had the same sort of life changing events so yeah to know that I can chat with them people hopefully I've helped them in some way I know that a lot lots of them have helped me along the way as well so yeah it's, it's good to link with them sort of people also it's good for Jessica and other people that sort of maybe see people in wheelchairs and maybe don't think they're um, looking for love or trying to find a partner and hopefully them seeing me and Jessica will make them realise that yeah, if, if there is someone that they've got to know that's in a wheelchair that yeah, maybe don't write them off because they still, still can have a happy and fulfilling relationship with them.
It's absolutely inspiring. I mean, it's definitely a thing that shows to people that, that there's more to life. You know, it's, you can still achieve things, and what an achievement you've done around us. I mean, we're sat in a room now that wasn't built eight years ago before you were chairman. Everything that's come along leaps and bounds. The football side of this NBA you've earned is what you've built here at Worthing Football Club. How does it feel to you uh, to have come in at the time that you did and seeing what it's become? Yeah, it's amazing. It's still have to sort of pinch yourself sometimes to see where we are and sort of the teams we're playing against now in the National League South. It's crazy to think that where we've come from and kind of since I have been awarded it. Although I try and reflect and look back from where we've come from a lot, like it has really made me think, God, what was it like when we first started? Because I've been chatting with my mum and dad about it and like, do you know what I mean? When we first used to come down here, when I first bought it, and they thought I was crazy and I had this idea and I wanted to make it work and obviously loved football and um, loved Worthing and wanted to help as much as I could. And I guess to know that I, in, in certainly in the last eight years, who knows what's going to happen from here, but yeah, certainly feel like we made a big impression and that's not just me, that's um, yeah, Calvin who was here when I first bought the club, obviously a lot of this goes down to him really because he, he got the ball rolling and he's uh, incredible and yeah and then obviously now Barry is chairman, he's, he's incredible and Chris and all the guys that are on the board now and off the, all, the, all the volunteers that are off the pitch and to know how much everyone's done and yeah how much we've achieved on the pitch is, is amazing and hopefully Long and heck continue. The surreal thing about Worthing being tied into the award, I mean, it's your achievement at Worthing, as well as, as you've mentioned all those names there, but it is an award for Worthing Football Club in a way, because it recognises what's happened to this football team in the last eight years, and it said, well, you know, here's an award for it. It's quite an amazing thing for Worthing Football Club as well as you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. I think it is it's testament to the club, really, because I mean, if I bought the club and it went peak Tom and nothing happened, then I'm sure I wouldn't have got an award or an MBE. I, I feel like it's, um, yeah, a, an award for the club and the whole community, really, who have jumped in and got on board, and obviously our crowds have gone through the roof, and uh, we now have a club that has teams all the way down to under-14s, and then a development centre under that, and we have seniors teams and walking football teams, and it's, yeah, it's amazing to see how much the community we engage with now and I think yeah like you just said the the MBE is testament to how, how well the club has integrated into the community and we, we're still you know only scratching the surface really I feel like there's loads more we can do. Let's drift away a little bit from the MBE and let's talk about the club it's been such a long time since I feel like you've had a platform just to talk about Worthing Football Club it's because like everything else for you with everything else going on your dream with the club was to get into the National League South in five years Six six wasn't our fault. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> I'd still take it as five playing seasons, full completed seasons. I'd, I'd, I'd say that the COVID years interrupted us. We've achieved it though. Yeah, and we're here now. We're into the second season of it. How's it been for you to actually be living what you dreamed of back in twenty fifteen? I think we've been amazing in the National League. So I think Hinch and uh, the squad and all his staff have done an amazing job of. Um, yeah, in our first season, obviously finishing fourth, finishing in the playoff places, winning the, what do they call it, the quarter-final playoff game, I don't know what they call it, I don't know if it's quarter-final, but yeah, that game, and then getting to the semi-final, and then losing to the, the guys that eventually went up, I feel like that's an incredible season for us, and obviously with that now, every year there's more expectation, which is great, but equally, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough league to play, and as we've all seen, there's some full-time clubs in this league, and we're trying to yeah, compete with them and, and, and make sure that we give a good account of ourselves every week and play the right style of football and still giving kids a chance from, from the area and, and yeah we're trying to sort of keep all our principles but also yeah compete at the top end of the league and I feel like we're doing that and that's yeah something that we can all be very proud of. Have you found the challenge of that being the man at the very top? How's that been for you? Um, yeah, well, I, I just love the football, so I don't know, it's, as long as we're playing well on the pitch and Hinch seems to do a pretty good job of that and um, Barry and the team in, off the pitch do an amazing job, so that, that, that makes my life easier, obviously. <clears throat> if we were struggling on the pitch and uh, things weren't going smoothly off the pitch, then it would be a more difficult job, but um, yeah, I, I, like I say, when I bought the club, I wanted to be involved, stay involved in football in my life and the club's enabled me to do that and I can't yeah, thank the, the club enough and I 
so pleased that I took on the opportunity when I did to, to get involved in football and um, yeah, just thankful for the people that made it happen really. I think a lot of people around Wyden would think the same thing to be fair, because who knows where this club would it be if that hadn't happened. But I mean, looking at it now and looking at everything going off the pitch, you've got the new stand that's going to be going up soon, all the other investments or things that are potentially happening at the club and the documentary as well that's, well, documenting you uh, and your story as well. With all this going on at the football club, is it, it feels a bit surreal almost, doesn't it? It's not worth the football club of No, yeah, it definitely feels weird. It feels like every time, uh, it just feels like we're riding the crest of the wave all the time. Like there's always something else happening and something big that's, like you say, the new stand and then um, that we've got other plans for other improvements around the ground to hopefully um, make the customer experience even better when they come here. And hopefully, yeah, to keep, if we want to keep climbing leaves, we've got to keep improving the facilities. But then, yeah, also the, the documentary that has come about, and that, that's, that's, again, amazing. That's something that has been in sort of the pipeline for a while and was going to happen um, before COVID, and then obviously didn't. And then we've now finally at a stage where it is happening again. So, yeah, we're chuffed to, to get that on the, over the line, and hopefully that will open the, um, open a lot more people's eyes in the community to, to the, the, the club that they've got in their own town and how, how well it's doing and, and the level of football it's playing. Hopefully a lot more football fans from the area or people that just love their community will come down and support the club and yeah, hopefully get a whole new set of eyeballs on it. It's definitely something that's been overdue, like you say. It's been something in the works for a long time. How have you found, found that? Because I've been following you around a lot, obviously. How are you finding having a camera in front of you more often than not? Um, yeah, it's weird, but you kind of get used to it. Like, they put the mic on you and then you kind of forget the mic's there after half hour, an hour or so, and then you kind of, yeah, you just, yourself. It's difficult when you're watching a game and there's a camera right in your face, but um, yeah, I just try and do my best to forget that it's there and just be natural and, um, yeah, do the things that I'd normally do. Try and just look around him to see the game. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's good fun. And ultimately, it's um, for the betterment of the club, really. And, that's why we're doing it and that's why yeah, the documentary is going to be hopefully very powerful for the club and yeah hopefully it will be a great driver to have more people in the ground watching the games which is what we all want. Looking at the future then beyond the documentary say it comes out it's a smash hit say this season all goes really well and we're up there still what are your ambitions what are you hoping to achieve coming into the season? I think what we achieved last season really finishing the playoff spaces Make sure that uh, with five games to go, we're, we're fine for something. The last thing I want or anyone wants would be to have sort of a the last five games, which we're, we're just mid table and there's, we can't go down, we can't go up, we, we're not playing for anything. Obviously, we never want to be in a situation where we're playing to stay up, but yeah, we want to make sure that we're in the playoff places and ex exciting um, end to the season. That's what we all want, and I'm sure Hinch will, would say the same that he wants to be yeah, fighting at the top of the table. and. As long as we're in the top seven, I think that's a, that's a great season considering the teams that are in the league this year. Obviously, there's teams that have come out of the Football League not too long ago. So, yeah, I feel like we're, yeah, we're punching above our weight, but equally we're, we're very ambitious and we want to make sure that we keep, keep staying at the top, of the top of the table and that uh, if the chance arises that we're ready to, yeah, to take it. The ambition you mentioned there is one of the most driving things at this football club. I think everyone's got a massive deal of it. I think the big dream is obviously being the level above the National League, potentially being an established club at that level, maybe even being professional one day. How do you feel as the owner of the club about going into those sort of those levels of football? Yeah, I think it's exciting. I, I think that's the next progression for the club really is to become a full time club and we'd like to get there within yeah, do you know I mean? the not too distant future really, regardless of maybe even what level we're playing at, whether if we're still at this level we'd like to be able to sustain a club that can be full time um, almost to reassure us that if we did go up that we could do it too so yeah regardless of whether we if we were to get promoted or not in the next few years we'd like to or well, certainly working towards being a full time club to give us the best opportunity to get promoted if we, if we don't otherwise this season.